So talking about wasted food and how a little part of me dies when I see you waste food and it's really not about finishing your plate. So this is kind of a four part series and the first part I talked about um, the story when I saw this family waste a bunch of food and how it made me feel and made me reflect on my upbringing and this idea for that, you know, immigrant parents often talked about taught often preach to us about finishing our plates because of this waste not want not um men mindset mindset and really it was my mom who pushed it because she was that was the way she showed her love once i when i kind of figured that out i started seeing the same patterns in myself as a mom and so i was like i did i didn't like that internal battle that kind of self that time when it's dinner and i see my kids leave some food on the plate it, it just makes me just want to say something but I don't so I bite my tongue and instead of continuously having it having that you know pain that experience during dinner I decided let's change my mindset it's a problem of mine and when I have a problem let's see it as an opportunity to grow and an opportunity to learn more about myself and so I changed my mindset and I created a different context for my reasons for feeling so strongly about this incident and it's really, it's not about finishing your plate and, and the idea that I'm showing my, my love through the food, but rather let's talk about saving the planet and having a bigger purpose um, that goes beyond the plate, that goes beyond you know my previous, gen the, my parents' generation and their need for survival. So this is the second part of a bunch of tips that I, that I do that are practical and that are, that are really relatively easy to do once you've actually gotten hang of it. So I talked about kind of like retail at the retail level, what I do when I do go shopping. Um, now, another tip that I have is filling in the gaps with non-perishable. So non-perishable food is food that doesn't rot in your fridge, doesn't rot. Um, and so I don't have teenagers yet in my house, but I can already see my kids doing this. They're home from school, they throw their backpack on the, on the floor, and then they walk into the kitchen, and then they open the fridge, and then they close the fridge and yell like, mom, there's no food. And then like, I'll roll, so I already like visualize what my reaction will be, which is, do you know how to use a can opener? Do you know that dried fruit is edible? Do you know how to open a jar of nut butter and toast a piece of bread that's from the freezer? Do you know how to open the freezer? <laughs> Let me sing to you, child. Um, if not, beans, beans. <laughs> the musical fruit, the more you eat, the more you toot, the more you toot, the better you feel. So let's have beans with every meal. And hopefully my horrible singing will make you remember about beans from baked beans like have you ever had baked beans are so good like have a little bit of like scrambled eggs with baked beans it's such a yummy protein and fiber enriched lunch or dinner you know serve that with i don't know some fruit or like a nice i don't know just even some carrot sticks that would be amazing so kidney beans chickpeas black beans cannellini beans um, they're like really cheap and they're actually, and they're really nutritious and delicious sources of protein and fiber. Um, whether you, you have it, um, you buy them dried or canned, they really have a long shelf life and they can spruce up any soup or stew if you need like a source of protein in it. Instead of like forgetting to, to defrost your chicken or defrost your, um, other meats that you, the slow cooked, uh, cuts of pork or beef that you have. So I prefer for for beans. I prefer to buy canned, and and for lentils, I like to buy dried. Um, and the reason for this is because lentils are when when you buy them, like the they're split, and so they're thin and small enough to cook with rice. So when I make my rice, I also throw in a bit of lentils in there, just as a source of protein. With whereas with beans, you kind of have to soak with dried beans. You have to soak them the night before so that they're they're. Through, at a, like do, that you don't have to like cook them for a super long time and I almost always forget to do things the night before because once my kids are asleep it's time for me to like chill and relax and kind of wind down before bed I don't like to do anything last right right before I go to bed anyway so other non-perishables that I always have stocked in my house um in my pantry are pasta uh for us we like macaroni because it's like Kids love macaroni. My husband last, like, likes macaroni. It's also very easier, much easier to cook than spaghetti. Um, like it's kind of like rice, but not right. Um, whereas spaghetti, you kind of have to like wait for it to half boil and then you kind of like shove it down the water. 
rice, obviously I have rice, and we usually do a, a blend of brown, basmati, and white rice. Um, I often have canned mushrooms because mushrooms, like fresh mushrooms, it's just like, it's so hard to always get that in um, on sale. So canned mushrooms. Uh, we also often have canned tomatoes. Again, tomatoes aren't always in season and canned tomatoes are just as good. And I find that it's actually flavor is much more, much more um, intense than fresh mushrooms. But, sorry, tomatoes. I find canned tomatoes much more like the, the flavor of the tomato is much more intense. I also buy tomato paste is a great um, way to make pizza sauce. If you ever have, if you ever need pizza sauce, you don't need to go out there and buy a can of pizza sauce. Okay, you get a canned tomato paste, which is like costs less than a dollar, um, usually or around a dollar, and then you just mix it with water, sugar, some spices, salt, and some oregano or whatever herbs you have, and that's your pizza sauce. Like you don't need to buy pizza sauce, and then you can just. So that's how I make my pizza sauce. Anyway, um, I always have canned tuna, canned fish, um, almonds, wa wa um, walnuts, raisins. Um, we're big nut, love nuts. Uh, peanut butter, we don't, we're not allergic to peanut butter, so we have, we'll always have that fully stocked in our pantry. Um, and then as for, as for like Asian foods, like non-perishable Asian foods, I always stock up on like dried Chinese mushrooms because I love having that in like fried rice and like um, the ground pork patty, like the jiuk ban that I make. Um, and then I have all types of dried noodles, like the thin ones, the thick ones, rice noodle, vermicelli. Um, ramen like air fried ramen um all different types of noodles um i always have chicken stock powder dried fungus like um like one yi my mok yi um canned baby corn all the canned like kind of chinese vegetables like if you ever had those mushrooms that are like in a ball and they're so good and they just like burst in your mouth i love buying those um seaweed all types of seaweed like the sushi seaweed nori um and then Coconut milk, I love putting, like, love making a curry with coconut milk. Uh, dried mung bean vermicelli is so fun to see. Like, so, like, it's a really great way to make your kids eat a little vegetables, but it, kids love, like, our, our kids love vermicelli, like, the rice, not rice vermicelli, but mung bean vermicelli, so they're clear. They almost look like glass noodles. Um, anyway, so when the, when the house has, like, no leftovers, when I don't have any leftovers in the fridge, it's empty. What I'll often do is I'll turn to my pantry and my freezer to see what I can whip up with what I have. Like if I don't have any fresh vegetables um, or fresh meat that's defrosted, um, then I'll make something. I'll just like most pasta dishes you can make without really any fresh ingredients. Like all you really need to need is some canned tomatoes, obviously dried pasta, uh, some frozen vegetables and some beans. And that's like really good hearty veg, uh, hearty pasta meal that you can have and just if you had some frozen like frozen shredded cheese you can throw that into the mix and it's so yummy and hearty and and filling the next thing um so i mentioned earlier in, in the previous video about gu my garden and how i have green onions in my garden um so th don't throw it try and regrow it like with um to regrow it in the garden or compost so my husband and i started gardening about like four years ago and it was kind of we were like total amateurs we're still amateurs we haven't really fully explored everything that you can grow in your own garden but i started like my first kind of experience was regrowing green onions and just kind of piqued my interest so what you do i just saw like one of those random videos you you scroll through and in, on instagram and what i did was i cut the ends like the root of the green onions and threw that in some water and like, kind of let it sprout a little bit. And then I just transferred into my garden with some soil. And I haven't had to buy green onions pretty much since. They just keep regrowing and they're like amazing, super robust. Like, I don't know why, but the, like, the little creatures that we get, the critters that we get don't like it. Uh, squir the squirrels, raccoons, and the, the crows in our, in our yard don't seem to like us. So I'm like, the more, the more for us. Another thing, I, I, what I want to grow eventually is celery. So apparently it's the same process. So you cut the bottom off and you soak it in water and it'll just keep growing. Same with romaine lettuce. We don't really eat a lot of lettuce. Um, we're more like, I don't know, lettuce isn't really a type of vegetable that I really enjoy. Uh, it's almost like a sandwich and anyway. Anyway, so I wouldn't mind trying doing celery. This year, we actually harvested our own figs. So we have a fig tree in the back that my dad's neighbor um 
literally like took from his own tree like you can just split a part of a branch and and make that into a tree <laughs> so we grew up we're growing figs we harvested zucchini snow peas green beans so my husband does a lot of the work um he'll like he'll go out there and kind of prune the leaves and stuff and then i'll water and harvest okay and cook of course it's a really good family activity to do with your kids because my daughter has been part of the zucchini tree so this year was our first time ever growing zucchinis and we actually gave her a, a, a little you know a seed uh, a seedling that we grew inside and then we let her plant it and she also helps water the plants when she plays in the yard like during the summer when she's playing with her water table she'll like take some of that water and just like start watering the plants and so when the plant was slowly growing like she actually saw the progress every time she went outside to play and by the time the fruits of her labor um were you know were harvested and then i was i cooked it she really appreciated eating the vegetables and she really loves zucchini and so it's, it's just a really great way for kids to understand how food is grown how much effort it takes what the earth resources are required like water sunshine all that stuff um to make a meal and another thing what we do is a little tip is we throw our coffee grounds so we make our own coffee we don't really rarely go out and buy coffee um but the old co like the used coffee grinds we throw into the garden it's actually really great to help with the fertilizer um it also helps attract worms so you need worms to make compost and in worms are actually really good for the soil um and it provides some key nutrients for the plant plants but also it's a great deterrent for slugs pests and other and snails and the kind of like little critters that may want to eat your plants so coffee grinds and then the, the next thing i want i want to do um is to actually create my own make my own compost um and so that we rely less on store-bought fertilizer um for our garden and i also want to collect my own rainwater so we rely less on the city's treated drinking water to water our plants um so that's kind of like a little garden you can also google like a bunch of blogs that talks about how to start a garden but like i just started with the green onions and then slowly just kind of got into it like you don't have to go crazy and try to like grow everything and anything like t like just just start small with a green onion and you'll just you'll love it next tip is eat mindfully then mindlessly save the rest so like talking about not finishing your plate really goes hand in hand with mindful eating because the more mindful you are when you're eating the more you realize how much you can eat and really have an idea of how hungry you are and how much your your stomach can hold and handle really a great way like for me it's my way of managing my emotional eating by being mindful with my hunger cues with being mindful of the textures and the flavors um, that are while I'm eating the meal and really appreciating the food. Um, because when folks start scarf down a meal while looking on their phone and just kind of like not even appreciating where the ingredients came from, um, like shoveling it instead of chewing, they don't really get to appreciate the ingredients and they also forget how much they've eaten. And they're not aware of how much they've eaten, how much they actually need to be full. And then sometimes they're like, oh my God, I'm full. And there's still so much left on the plate. They'll just be like, oh, well. Whereas if you do that, act, that active mindfulness while you're eating a meal, then the next time you go out, you're like, oh, I know at this moment how I'm feeling that I'm not gonna need so much. I'm not gonna order the big steak and steak frites, but I'm gonna order something smaller. I'm gonna maybe order like, I don't know, a burger with a salad instead. Or maybe because you're so mindful of how hungry you are, you're like, oh, you know what? I can eat a lot more. Um, I am actually really hungry. So being able to gauge your hunger levels by practicing mindfulness is a great way just within our, for our own health as well as a way to reduce food waste. Don't bite off more than you can chew. And this is literal, right? For you or your kids. One of my biggest pet peeves is you know, when someone takes more food than they can eat and then throws out their leftovers. And this is like, especially true when there's like a gathering of people, like a social social event or something like that. And the food is self-serve. It's like a buffet style. And there's always like, I always observe, there's always like one or two people who will just like pile their plates. And then at the meal, end of the meal, when everyone's kind of like done, they'll, you'll see half their plate still full of food. 
And and then the, and then they'll put a napkin on the top as a way to indicate, oh yeah, I'm done. Like I'm not that much. I'm not that big of a pig that like ate so much or whatever the reasons are. Okay, I'm not I'm not judging, but it just it irks me because of that whole history that I have. And then when the host cleans up, the host of the event cleans up. They don't. They have no choice but to throw whatever they took away because no one's gonna keep a stranger's left. Less stranger, someone else's leftovers. Like you don't know how much they touch. You're gonna have to throw it away. And then another thing I don't like is when parents overestimate what their kids can eat. Um, and then they, they just take way too much and they load up like, oh yeah, my kid can eat like five slices of pizza. And it's like, and then when the when then they leave, like all the kids have done is like taking a bite out of every slice of pizza and there's like literally five slices of pizza left. And it's like saliva covered, sol soggy crap that no one wants, not even their parents want. Like I don't really like, I don't like eating my kids leftovers either. Um, but what happens is when these parents do that and load up the plates on their kids, it this behavior teaches kids that when they become adults, that food is this like endless supply that it, we can just take it for granted because it's disposable, um, that there are no consequences when it get, when you get thrown away, that you can just take a bite out of each slice of pizza and then just leave it because you know whatever whatever you leave on the leave on the plate, it's gonna be it's gonna disappear anyway. So just do whatever you want, right? And it just it really minimizes the how valuable food is. So don't bite off more than you can chew, please. Like just if you, it's, so instead what you could do is, okay, so have a second helping. So like fuck social expectations around getting seconds. Like, please, sir, I want some more. Um, like if you know you're gonna, that you're the type that takes more than your stomach can hold, like you're that type, you're like, I know that's my pattern. I often leave half the food on my plate. Um, I know I'm, I get full a lot easier than I think. And in Chinese, there's actually a saying called an fut tou zha, which is my, your eyes are wider than your stomach. Like you think you're gonna be able to eat a lot more than your, your stomach can hold. There really is no shame in taking a smaller portion of the first plate. Like if you, if you know that you don't, you tend to do that, Go to the go to your buffet or whatever the, the event and just grab like half of what you usually grab. And then after you finish that, then and you're still hungry, you can go back for a second plate. And it's this is an all over twist, right? We're not in in um that that book. What I'm trying to understand is maybe it's these people who do that, um, they grew up feeling it's socially unacceptable to get seconds. Like getting seconds is kind of like disrespectful to the host that you just, you gotta like take what you need and then that's it. Or maybe they feel like, you know, there's a need to leave food on the on, on your plate as a sign of respect that while wow, it's it's like, you know, I don't know, sign of respect that uh, yeah, I've, I'm full, right? This idea that, oh, wow, you created, you created so much food that you allowed me to be full and I even left food on the food on my plate to show that I'm full. Either way, like whatever reasons people have for leaving half their plate full or whatever food they leave, you know, like it's time to break those social expectations and focus really on the greater good. So that concludes kind of this four part series about my rant on how a little part of me dies when I see people waste food. I'd love to know your thoughts. Like, were you taught to finish your plate? And really, how do you feel when you see someone waste food? Or if you're, if you're the person who does that, like, what are your reasons? why you do that like what are the social expectations that you grew up with that creates this behavior um, i'd love to know leave in the comments